Now we're going to do a lot of example problems to illustrate how to do calculations with all the forces you just learned about. So this one, pushing blocks, illustrates how to use gravitational force, how to use the normal force a little bit, and how to use one kind of force we didn't really talk about. Here I'll label it as F12. It really just means the forces of how two objects push on each other. It's kind of like a normal force. It's often called a contact force. So this would be the force that one object, object one, applies to object two. So we're going to do it with two blocks, as you see here, on a frictionless surface. Okay, so here's frictionless surface. Here's big block one with mass one. Here is smaller block two with mass two. The surface, as I said, is frictionless. Let's see. I had a frictionless surface, but I loaned it to some undergraduates for a party, and they lost it. So what I have instead is my two blocks, M1, M2, and I have them on these roller part things here. So they're going to roll around like that. And what we're going to do is push on them. So there, that's my hand, applying FP, a pushing force, which is also kind of like a contact force, the force of my finger pushing on M2. And you can see they truly are, are frictionless. Okay. In this problem, they're always going to be stuck together. We're going to push on them this way. They're going to move this way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick them together like that. Okay. I'm going to push like this, pushing force on block one, just like that. And the question is, basically, what happens? So let's look at it and ask ourselves a few different things. First, let's ask, what is the acceleration? Okay. So acceleration. So here's a tip on solving problems like this. If all the masses move together, then what you can do is you can treat it as one object. So instead of thinking of it as mass 1 and mass 2, we'll just think of it as a total m1 plus m2. And we can apply uh, Newton's law. Newton's second law, let's do it in the y. Some of the forces in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. Well, the y direction isn't actually the interesting direction here. I mean, we do have uh, mg pulling down, so we have but we have uh, the normal force pushing up, minus, we have mg pulling down. m would be the total, m1 plus m2, g, equals the mass, which would again be the total, m1 plus m2, but the acceleration in the y is 0. Right? It's not moving up and down in the y. Equals 0. So that's really just a way to find the normal force in this case, which isn't really what we want to know. We asked for acceleration, and we've implied in this direction. We're pushing it this way. How hard does it accelerate that way? So let's say some of the forces in the x equals the mass of the acceleration in the x. Okay, And if we treat it as one object, then the force being applied to this object, the only one in the x is the force of the push, Fp. So Fp is the sum of all the forces. m1 plus m2 is the mass, acceleration in the x. So this one is pretty straightforward. The acceleration in the x is simply the push force divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2. So as long as they stay together, when I push and they accelerate, as long as they stay together, I can essentially treat it as one object. Right? And the questions, though, can get more interesting, so frictionless, is we can ask what are the forces? So the forces, so now we want to treat them separate. Because this is not as simple as the acceleration. They all have the same acceleration. They don't experience the same forces. So let's see if we can figure that out. Let's get the total force on 2, m2. Because it's not just fp. I, I'm not really pushing on m2. I'm not touching m2. Nothing to do with m2. I'm only pushing on m1. We've got to figure out what is pushing M2. So let's do Newton's second law. And now we're just doing the x direction. The sum of the forces on 2 is the mass of 2 times the acceleration in the x that we already found. So what are all the forces on 2? It's not me. I'm not pushing it. It's that block 1 is pushing on block 2. Right? So all the forces on 2 is F1 on 2. So 1 subscript means the total on that mass 
the dash subscript means this pushing that. Okay. That's equal to m2 times acceleration uh, in the x that we already found. So all we got to do is um, substitute our acceleration in the x that we already found. It was fp over m1 plus m2. So essentially then, the force of 1 on 2, simple substitution, shows you that it's m2 over m1 plus m2 times fp. Okay. The force that this block pushes on this block is really just a fraction of the total mass. This force, or sorry, the mass 2 gets its fraction of the total mass, fraction of the force. Right? If we had to divide fp up, they divide it up by their masses. Okay? That's m2's fraction of the total mass. Very exciting. Right? So the fraction of the mass guides the answer. We could also say, though, what is the total force on m1? It's not just fp, because I'm pushing with fp, but m2 is going to push back. Right? You can't push here without pushing back there. So let's do um, uh, the sum of the forces on 1 equals mass of 1 times acceleration of the x. All right. OK, so what are all the forces on 1? We've got fp in the forward positive direction. And we have uh, plus f2 on 1. I'm not going to assume that it's negative. I'm just going to solve for it, and we'll see if it comes out negative, pushing back. Your intuition tells you it pushes back. Equals m1, and then times acceleration of the x. We can go ahead and substitute it now. fp over m1 plus m2. Okay. So there you go. So if you want to figure out what is the force of 2 on 1, that's kind of the force we're interested in, then we just bring this over here, right? And we say, OK, f. 2 on 1, fp comes over here, and you factor out an fp, and let's see, what would you get? You would get fp, and it looks like you'd have um, m1 over m1 plus m2 minus 1, because you brought that one fp over. All right, and then you'd say uh, you could call this m1 plus m2 over m1 plus m2 to get a common denominator, and this would be m1 minus m1 minus m2 m1 minus m1 goes away. And you say, wait a minute, why does f2 one? I thought it would depend on m2, or m1, not m2. But we're not figuring out the total force on this block. We're figuring out this force that 2 applies to 1. So let's finish it then. And we see that f2 one is negative m2 over m1 plus m2 fp. And look, they're the opposite of each other. We just did Newton's third law. Action reaction pair. If the block 1 pushes on 2 by this amount, m2 over m1 plus m2 fp, then this block has to push on this block by the amount, m2 over m1 plus m2 fp, just in the opposite direction. But then, to make it match this, we could say, what is the total force on uh, f1? Well, it was this thing, it was fp plus this one. We could say, okay, it was. Uh, F1 equals, let's see, it would be Fp minus M2 over M1 plus M2 Fp, which would be 1 minus M1 plus M2 minus M2 is M1. Oh, look, M1 over M1 plus M2 Fp. Sure enough, the force that actually moves M1 is its fractional mass. Of the Fp, it gets a total amount, a net force, M1 over the sum. So they divided up the fp by their masses, and their interaction forces followed Newton's third law. What more could you ask for? Everything worked. So the point of this, give you a little idea how to start a problem like this, and to see that you do have to think about contact forces to figure out how a composite object moves around.